charge this morning when Melissa came in. Wait, <laughs> wait, time out. <laughs> and Rob. former news director of this fine uh, establishment, Mr. Mark Cram. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. Nice to be back and haunting the halls of WRR once again. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm sure in the old days, all the awards used to be in the hallway on the walk down they, to the studio. They were actually, yeah, yeah, all along both sides of the hallway there. Yeah, when we Rick the owned flats, the place, yeah. and I imagine you were responsible for a pretty good percentage of those. Well, one or two. I'll show you a couple of pictures. I had the very dark hair then it was naturally <laughs> <laughs> naturally it didn't come out of a bottle it came out of my head that way, so, yeah. I, I remember you when you in your younger days we were both over well, at wyvn together yeah, for yeah, a while that is correct yeah that's the early 90s at the uh, channel 60 yeah maybe and many of our younger listeners and viewers probably don't know that martinsburg once had a fox tv affiliate there you go uh, right uh Right here in Martinsburg, yeah. uh, TV60, WYVN, 92, 3, 4, somewhere around there, Mark? Uh, uh, yeah, they launched in 91, and I think they finally went belly up 93, 94, something like that. Yeah. So, But then now they're they're broadcasting at ION programming. It's still there, but to just, uh, I say it's the Born Again Shopaholic Network. It's, yeah. it's <laughs> religion and, <laughs> and marketing, you know. Yeah, there, there were some uh, pretty talented people who came out yes. of there. Uh, that first crew, especially Jay Crawford, went oh, on to yes. ESPN for yep. a very long career yep. there. Yep. Uh, Kevin, Nathan Kevin Nathan replaced Jay Crawford. He mm-hmm. has worked in the New York yep. metro area for 25 years. Jeff Hertrick was the uh, news director, and uh, he went on to do uh, quite a lot of producing at uh, National Geographic. Mm-hmm. I think he was at News Channel 8 for a while, yes. was he not? Right. Yeah, so a lot of good stuff came out of there. Melissa Power is our guest here on the program from the Board of Education. She was recently reelected in the May 14 primary, but for the Board of Education, that basically was the general election vote. Melissa, good morning. Thank you for coming in. Good morning. Thank you for having me, Rob. And I was anxious to meet Mark, and uh, I heard an unfamiliar voice as I was writing in to, to the studio this morning mm-hmm. and come to find out, you know, we've got some uh, a family history here that's, that, that's, that goes way back to, to when my uh, grandparents uh, lived in Tucker County, mm-hmm. West Virginia. So, that's right. Yeah. 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 Mark, I didn't know your folks were from there. My mother's family were all Tucker County, yeah. yeah. That's right. I so. had no idea. And we totally excluded Mr. Stubblefield, so, <laughs> you know. You know, and here's the thing I, I love to observe. And, and See, I was fascinated by this conversation because this is kind of my job to learn things mm-hmm. about people on air and off. So the two of you were going back and forth about Tucker <laughs> County and, and, and where, names in common that yes, we know. Yeah. Where yes. your family lived, yep. where your family yep. lived. And I'm enjoying this. I look back at Bill and he's like, no one has said a word to me <laughs> in two minutes. They're not talking to me. They're not acknowledging me. And he sat back there and he thought, I'm going back to my ship. I think I've actually gotten a new favorite right at the moment. You know, someone that's in common. I, I, I was, you know, always fond of Mr. Subblefield, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking now I might have a new favorite. Well, see so, how quickly uh, it goes, Bill? Oh, it's, well, like, yeah, yeah. it's fickle. That, that ship is sailed in the sunset. <laughs> it's fickle, Bill. Taking it in change, water as though, it goes. But it might change. If it he asks change. me some different questions, you never know. I mean. Oh, I have a few questions. <laughs> I'm sure but you I, do. I think, you know, you know, it's always... Well, it looked like the, eventually the conversation was going to find a common relative between the two of you, but it stopped short. <laughs> yeah, it, it did. However, if you go back far enough, there might be something somewhere. To be I mean, who knows? You, know? yeah. if you go back well, to Adam and Eve, we're already well, there. You uh, can, look, I'm not going to go there when it comes to West Virginia. <laughs> all right, all, we're all related. So, uh, Melissa, a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, First and foremost, there is a new superintendent that's been hired. You got him out of Cabell County. Can you tell Mm -hmm. us about that process? Yeah, so we actually started out uh, the day after uh, we had elected to not continue with Ron Stevens' um, contract negotiations. And uh, we put out uh, ads for um, a new superintendent and post- posted that position. And we actually, uh, to probably Mr. Stubblefield's dismay, um, I will, I'm happy to report, we got not just 
twice, but three times the amount of applicants this year than we did last year. No, that would not be my dismay. <laughs> I may be a little surprised in that short period yeah, of time. Yeah. But I'm that's the way you make a good selection. You have yes. like a number of candidates. Yes. Yeah. And and I, I say dismay because I think um if I heard you correctly when we were talking about doing this that we were probably you were thinking we might get not get um candidates. I think Bill was concerned you wouldn't be thorough enough in the short amount oh, of time. Oh we were thorough, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I you know that's one of the things that I, I that I thoroughly enjoy about our board. Um, we each have different connections or different ways that we do research. And um, Damon and I sometimes are, are similar in how we look at things. And then there are times where it's me and Jackie or Jackie and Pat or, you know, however that, that maps out. But we actually, when we sat down and we had uh, conversations about the candidates, um, we were able to pull, you know, from from information we already that they might have already known about the person based on their own working history within the state and um, in the surrounding let, area. Let's, let's and, move and one others. step before that. Yeah, How yeah. many candidates did you have? Did you end up? With? I think it was twenty, twenty-one, somewhere in there. From where? All over. We All had outs- Arkansas, uh, Texas, New Jersey, I believe. Um, uh, how, all over. How did you solicit? How did you advertise? So we had um, uh, various opportunities between regional um, and some national. Um, there were some things that we weren't able to do from last, you know, last like we did last year, uh, due to the fact that they usually need two to three weeks lead time and we did it the very next day and we needed it posted immediately um but there were some um ways that we could get around some of that we sent out um information to the um state west virginia school board association so they knew that that we were looking um there were some uh national um groups that that we advertised with that are affiliated with boards of education and and superintendents so out of the out of the what you said 25 Mm -hmm. to 30 candidates 20 don't don't say 25 to 30 okay (laughs) out of of the 20 candidates how many were viable candidates okay so one of the things that and i i will say as much there there were there were likely um so your word viable can be very, very in, in subjective in, in view. Um, when I say that, it, every there were, there were probably about 15 candidates that we were able to state could or, you know, would be able to satisfy the requirements by state code. Um, anybody that is out of state uh, would need to go through a certain process with the state in order to get that, get, get that certification. Um, but there were, you know, between degree levels and transferable um, um, things that, that could come into the state. We we felt that there was about 15 that were that passed the the muster of um, state code. Beyond that, we then delineated down to experience, and um, then we delineated delineated further of what what accomplishments um, could we could we see through um, the the resumes and what were we specifically looking for here in the eastern panhandle you know in berkeley county so um various unique things and and one of the things i will say about the process is um i have to commend dr schooley with our with um our central office he went above and beyond um in my opinion um in helping us get uh the information we needed um put compiled together for us to review uh sitting down with us and having conversations about what specifically we're looking for and and why we're looking for it and and that helped narrow the gap um uh even further to to you know select uh, three individuals that we wanted to bring in for uh interviews Going back to our earlier conversation, mm-hmm. my concern, my nervousness is that that the ca- candidate pool is restricted. The farther you can get, the broader the candidate pool mm-hmm. is, the better the chance of getting a good candidate. Uh, something you said that implied that if they applied from out of state, mm-hmm. they did not meet the state requirements. Does that mean that any out of state candidate was automatically no. excluded? No, okay. we, no, no, no. We actually um, interviewed 
um, out of state candidates as well as in state. So that's now. And when I say there's a requirement, it's like a day long uh, course, I believe, if I'm if I'm remembering my research correctly, where you you go and you get some training and then they say, okay, you've attended training, you've you've completed this, so therefore we, we can extend this this certificate to you. Well, I and that's the state. Yeah, I hope you I hope you the choice you made is a wonderful choice. Uh, and and I, I believe so. I hope he uh, proves to be that way. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I uh, uh, if your process works, more power to you. Mm -hmm. But what normally takes three or four or five months for a selection process, you folks have condensed it about two or three weeks. I have a little bit of a. I hear what you're saying. Last year, we had several meetings that helped inform us of the process, helped us navigate what this process would look like, and help us form together what we were um, looking for as far as job description and you know any any thing that were we felt that was was a necessary uh, requirement for our um, Eastern Panhandle. I, you, I would dare say that. Um, using that process that we had last year as a template eliminated a lot of time and effort into that. That that was that was a huge that was a huge chunk of what we went through. The other thing was we spread it out over time because we had so many other things that were going on at the same exact time. We had budgets, we had staffing um, things to address, we had LSIC meetings that we needed to you know, listen to, to presentations from the school. We, there were so many different things that were going on at that same time that you just couldn't do what we were able to do in the last month we weren't we wouldn't have been able to do that last year in say like april because there was so much going on last year mark cram good morning nice good morning. To, nice to meet you, nice to meet you too. Uh, and uh, find some uh, roots in common there <laughs> in a, n another part of the state of west Virginia. so go easy on me okay, okay. Well, I, let's I, see. I, well no <laughs> actually no actually go it's, hard it's I, a big I, I'm, question I'm good. yeah yeah the 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 north middle school situation sure. obviously caught a lot of people's attention it did Interestingly mm -hmm. enough, I was looking at a, a Pew Foundation uh, mm -hmm. survey research that was published last fall, in November, about bullying nationwide. Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to use a couple of school terms here mm -hmm. uh, and say I think the education system in America gets a failing mark and needs improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, that study indicated that, that up to 20% of students mm -hmm. nationwide Yes. Uh, have been bullied and so people were shocked that north this is going on at north middle i I'm think <laughs> I, I think i think it's just the one barometer yeah. in yeah. the whole thing yeah. here's a big question obviously yeah. and a lot of individuals in the education field teachers and board members and so forth say here's what we're doing obviously here's what we're doing isn't working Absolutely. What needs to be done to address the bullying consistency. issue? Consistency. That's, that's part of the issue is consistency. And when I say that I was not surprised, I, it wasn't that I had foreknowledge of, of what was going on at North specifically. I, I was not surprised in the sense of we've seen these reports all over the nation. Um, so, and, and there was another school within our county that was dealing with some similar issues that I brought to the board's attention as well as the superintendent's attention. and. Um, you know, it took it took several conversations for that to begin to get addressed, which I feel was um, a travesty that it took that much. Um, I, I'm going to say this: when we are looking at one particular piece of um, um, education legislation i think the intention and i've said this you know before to to others so you know people listening if we've had this conversation you've heard me say this before i don't believe the intention be behind every student succeeds act that president obama signed into in in, in into law uh, was intentionally meant to